The next two tools that I want to introduce you to are the bridge and spin tools. First with bridge, bridge in Blender is exactly like it is in most applications. It allows us to bridge two edge loops together to connect them via faces with their you know, open boundaries. So here in my example file, I have two cubes with open ends on each side facing each other and I would like to bridge them together. Well, you won't find the bridge tool in the toolbar just yet because it's fairly new and it's not yet been added, but you can find it from the specials menu, which the hotkey is W and you can find bridge to edge loops. Or if you happen to forget the hotkey for the specials menu, you can simply hit the space bar and type in bridge and it will immediately pull it right up. If you just left click then, it will immediately bridge the two. And we do have one option down on the operator panel to just set it to the inside or not. But that's about it, fairly limited, but it does work fairly well. The next tool, or actually one more example on the bridge tool here on the next layer, is a slightly more complex, but you can still see that it works quite well using a more complicated loop, albeit not very com much more complicated. And by just hitting W and bridge to edge loops, we can see that it connects just fine. In the near future, we should have a few more options for exactly how this will connect, but for the time being, it's just short and sweet. Now, the spin tool is a little bit different. And this is similar to loft tools that you might have in other applications and such. But basically, it allows us to take a selection, whether that is a profile or not. It doesn't actually matter what it is, except that it must be a mesh selection in this case. And it allows us to spin it around an origin point extruding along the way and set the number of steps for that extrusion. For example, here I have this very simple profile here. And if I go into edit mode, again by pressing tab, and we'll just select everything by control click and dragging around it for our lasso select. And if I now just hit Alt R for or choose spin right here, you'll see immediately what happens. Well, it's not very a very good result or very pleasing result because you see it's all skewed. And this is because the spin tool is using the 3D cursor as the central point. So it's using always using the 3D cursor as the pivot point, which is going to extrude and spin around. So let's undo that. And if we now just say go to front view, since it's perpendicular to the surface that I want to create, this will work much better. So the hotkey for spin is Alt R. So pressing Alt R, that will immediately extrude out that section and give me a very nice lofted or spin profile. And if we look down here in the operator panel, which again can also be accessed by pressing F6, we can see that we can adjust the number of steps to any number that we wish. We can enable the dupli option or duplicates option so they won't actually extrude and it will simply du duplicate and rotate around. We can also set the degrees for how far along it should go and it will adjust that using the same number of steps. So if we wanted to go 360, we would set that to 360. Maybe we'll increase the steps to 32 and then we can also adjust the axis. In this case, I have going along the Y axis, I could set that to negative one around the X and maybe the Z, and we can adjust this, you know, any number of ways. In this case, you know, I definitely just want negative one around the Y and zero, zero. We can also adjust the center in the same way. Now, this can definitely change a few things, as you can see, because again, this center is being set based on where the 3D cursor's at. So if you want to adjust this after the fact, you certainly can, but generally the workflow is to first set the 3D cursor and then spin around the appropriate axis that you wish. As you can see, if I position the 3D cursor here, press Alt R, it's spun around that point. So this is the easiest way to do it. In this case, if you wanted to go around the exact center, but your cursor's off to the side here, you could just simply hit Shift C that would recenter the 3D cursor and then we could spin it and you'd be good to go.